Ars Game. Chapter 13, Uprising. Written by Homura. Day D2 Before the Uprising. While we were working on the quarry I asked him to take a tour of the renegade clans. And it turned out I was right. We found ourselves in the evening at the bottom of the showers with a menu placed on a table. Those of our tribes who were taken prisoner are well retained here. He said. Or did where you get that prison card by the way? I asked. It's not important. Anyway, I told them to spread the word and now everyone wants to meet Seb. Some refused to join us so I had to persuade them. Hence the blood on your hand. I noticed. It's not important. On my side my guys are ready. Everything is in place to make this brachy of bastard hit dust. Once again, how do you plan to launch this uprising? Dim asked. Ha, huh, in the most cliché way ever. It was D1 before the start of the op, guards landed at the playing area. I was playing chess with Dimitri when they came to me. No need to say more, I'm coming with you. My actions had obviously attracted attention, not in fact that Brakiev Hor had already revealed my name to the old soldier. No Seb shouted Dimitri. At that moment the whole prison finally got to know my identity. What was happening to me was more or less premeditated. My men who were already in cellule began to cause mayhem. One of them even hit a guard. Release it. Release it. Release Seb. They screamed. As it was going to go nuts I took the rifle from my soldier's hands and gave him a but to calm him down. Silence returned automatically to the room. That's enough. Had I scream. Return immediately to the cell. Without arguing, they obeyed. One of the guards stormed in and pointed his rifle at me. Throw this away. He yelled. I will comply. But what was my surprise when our eyes met? Lecter? Seb? This confirmation from my friend the guard went without his knowing it to establish my authority in this prison. Because as my little sister had said, I too underestimated the name I made for myself in the north. So it was with a confident smile that I followed him. I had been dragged here against my will with a hood over my head. I must have done about twenty kilometers. It was the distance I had estimated from Lars and the rest of the group. The mega factory was split in two. The prison or workplace and the garrison where the machines were ready for use. Since we didn't have the means to attack this place directly, we had to force their garrison to come to Sturban. Ha when I thought about it everything seemed so simple to me. Hey you listen to me kid. Told me the colonel. Of course. I was strapped to a chair across from my friend the demon director. To his right a well-dressed young blonde woman. Noble surely. I won't even give her beyond eighteen, but her very mature look made me think it wasn't just anyone. Next to my good friend Carl Lecter. Tell me, you had to hide things from me my good friend. Said the old man. First class Lecter can you confirm his identity? A. Affirmative sir. He is the one who captured me. Who captured you you said? Seb never takes a prisoner as far as I know. Yes, but. He cut her off by raising his hand. He walked to his office and took out an old bottle of whiskey before refilling two glasses. He even untied me before offering it to me. Don't worry, he's not poisoned. I guess so. Poison is a woman's weapon. I say a smirk. I felt the blonde twitch and glare at me. This word was addressed to her yes since it seemed that it was thanks to her that I was there. You want me to tell you a story? How did I lose my left eye? I've got plenty of time. I said. So I said. At the time I must have been around 25 years old, I had a stable situation my wife was going to give birth to my I do not know. The third child. My late congratulations then. The war in that time was done with muskets, it fired a shot and it took a long time to reload. 20 seconds charging time. Had I said. You know the drill. 
even for the best it had to take 14 to 16 seconds and most of the time it was still crap. And I was part of the 1st Infantry Regiment as a private. What? You've lived so long being on the front lines. Say I'm really surprised. A soldier so brutal he would kill a bear. My parents my parents were noble. They would have wanted a bright future from me as a lawyer or a doctor. But you, you didn't want it. Exactly. He shouted outright. Okay I would have had a stable life in the rear, very quiet, but I felt in the depths of my guts that it was not my destiny. I know that feeling. As if the goddess of war wants you to take part in these conflicts. Absolutely. He yelled again. The sense of camaraderie that the military provides is second to none. It transcends family ties. The blood, the battles, the excitement of the fights, to find oneself in the face of death. Get shot, shoot others. Make holes. Exactly. Say you want to know why I did not go to military school despite my status. We both had the same unhealthy smile and we pointed our glass in hand. To feel the thrill of combat. Our response was perfectly synchronized so much so that we laughed out loud. Before even realizing it this guy had become my best friend. The other two stared at us totally lost in our thinking. Ha ha I really like you. You're the second person I'm having a conversation like this with. The history of the scar don't forget. Ah yes yes. So I was saying. I must have been about 25 years old, I had just packaged a dozen guys with the bayonet, making my way to the next trench. But as I was about to continue my journey when a cannon that I had not seen opened fire. The shell explodes right in front of me. Before I even knew it I was thrown through the air doing a spin before hitting the ground. He live hard time the old guy. I was dead it was obvious. This is where I saw him. Seen what? The palace of God. Not the God that Elysian prays no, the God of war. Enough Uncle Lino, you are completely delirious. Said the blonde. No no it was real. Captivated by its story I moved my seat closer to find out more. He spoke to me, he wanted me to continue his work. Your hour has not yet come he told me. When I woke up, although after losing an eye I found myself endowed with an incredible frenzy. Frenzy? I fought all day without eating, drinking or sleeping. I made my way to the enemy HQ and stuck my bayonet in their general's eye. What the fuck is this old man, would he be ours envoy? No he's too old and he's stuck here in this prison. Well I said too much. Tell me a bit about yourself. Uncle Steinberg you promised to deliver it to me. Calm down Ayan. This famous Seb could be anyone. The guy in front of me is more than that. I leaned forward with my fingers crossed and stared at the young woman named Ayan with an arrogant smile. I am the white tiger of the mountain. And I'm here for the hunt. Two tigers cannot coexist on the same mountain. The old man told me. I'll just have to create mine then. The blonde tilted hearing these words as if she understood me. After this interlude with the director I had more or less figured out who this woman was. She was probably working with the intelligence services and had certainly pierced me up to date. So once back I decided to speed up the planning. So how was it? You are really Seb? If it was him, he would have died by now. I was surrounded by a myriad of convicts. While they were wasting their time arguing over which thing I was looking for someone in particular in the crowd. Nesta. He got up with a bang and came to attention. Change of plan. We start tomorrow. When this is all over I will have a discussion with Athena. What do you mean he spoke to me? This guy was not an envoy but he seemed to have been blessed by ours. If there is another human like him. Lie down, the guard is coming. Everyone had followed my instructions, my biggest worry was going to be Brachiev's stab back. Day D0. While the guard was making his usual rounds he had to stop at my cell. What's wrong with your buddy? 
he asked Dimitri. I don't know, he's been like that for a while now. The guard opened the door and walked over to me, which was curling up as if I had been stabbed. As soon as he turned me around I gave him a lock around his neck and broke his neck. It happened too fast for him to understand. You haven't lost your hand. Always as bad act to you. Shut up. Dimitri stripped the soldier of everything. He took his pistol, his rifle, his bayonet and the keys. He opened all the doors of the block and the men followed me in silence. Our little revolution will not be quiet. I told them. As I walked through the halls, the number of inmates behind me increased. At the bend of a block a guard saw us. Dimitri threw his bayonet in his throat and he collapsed without being able to give the alert. He picked it up after cleaning it and opened the rest of the doors. Once at the weapon room the guards were already dead, my men were distributing the guns. They gave me mine that I already loved. A trench gun? You don't like sir? The guy asked. Oh yes. I love. Explosions erupted everywhere, outside it was shooting in all directions. In the middle of this carnage I walked rifle on my shoulder contemplating the spectacle. The whole prison had risen. I once saw in a war movie a Japanese officer execute fifteen American soldiers. The guys were fifteen guys not even tied up in front of a single guy armed with a seven-shot pistol. Seriously if these fifteen guys had rebelled at the same time they wouldn't have died. I assume that there is neither enough guards nor really enough ammunition to stop the prisoners if they all rebel at the same time. Especially here where the ratio is two guards for thirty convicts. Or we will find the Seb weapons, those in the hide will not be enough. Said a guy. Well then. We're going to make some. As much as you can, you guys from the forge are going to toil like crazy and supply us with guns and bullets. I turned to the head of the Foga. A stunted old man whose life hung on a pack of cigarettes. Sorry to impose that on you grandpa. Don't worry, it's a pleasure to help Elias' son. There is just a delivery of guns waiting in the warehouse. Perfect. Right now the prison is upside down. Prisoners fought with whatever came to hand. A guard might kill an inmate or two, but the others would stab him. And that's exactly what was happening. Follow me comrade. Kazima told me as we headed for the roof. I followed him without complaining until we fell into a small closed room. Quickly the Tarkovikthi had surrounded us and I did not recognize any of Kaz's men. Opposite Colonel Brakiev. Serious Kaz. I say jaded. Sorry comrade. You really thought your little banging was going to work so well. Kazima kept me informed of your slightest deed and gesture Seb. It is true that your plan may work, but what about the long term? Once out of here we'll be hunted down like dogs. I have nothing to say to an asshole like you who accepts to live as a slave. What's your words Negro I like you? So what's your plan? I asked. I'm going to capture all these beautiful people and give them to my friend Steinberg. Of course it will be done in blood. I dropped my rifle to the ground and pulled out my bayonet. Brakiev threw his away and did the same. You want to fix it with the fist it suits me. Stop comrade, you won't be able to defeat him with your bare hands. Do not intervene you other. Said Brakiev. Whatever the outcome of the fight, promise me that your men will do nothing to me. You are sure of yourself, tell me. It's okay, they won't do anything to you. So. He warned himself ready to attack. He passed his knife from hand to hand watching me with that amused smile. I took a slight step in his direction and then I jumped on him. As soon as I was within range he struck a vertical blow meant to split me open. It's over quickly my word. Yes very quickly. I had planned the shot so I backed up at the last moment then I drew my gun and shot two bullets in Brachiev's knee exploding them. Further shots hit him in the abdomen and arm. Motherfucker! One of his men yelled. 
immediately several of them turned and began to slaughter or stab their companions. Brakiev no longer understood anything. I was staring at him darkly. You really thought I was going to waste my time with a cowardly carrion like you? Sergeant Kazima dirty traitor. Sorry Colonel, but I can't take it anymore. Every day I threw up your cowardice, sucking the tail of that Steinberg rot at this point. You have lost your pride. I knew you would be a problem. I say crouching down in front of him. So I asked Kazima to act like he betrayed me to work for you. It was easier to watch your actions like that. Asshole traitor. And you kid you're a bastard of deceit. Seriously you thought I was going to face this guy in single combat. I would waste a lot of time for nothing and I have a rebellion to lead. A sheep like him who takes pleasure in his has no right to live. Thank you for pissing me off all his colonel years. Kazima slipped his bayonet under his throat and opened it in half before throwing it to the ground. He then turned to the rest of the group before proclaiming. From now it's me who's in charge. Anyone have a problem with this? Nobody says anything. Kazima inspired them both fear and respect, so they stood with him. Well. Let's get out of this hell. On the roof I was finally able to proceed to the last phase of the plan. As the sun rose I fired a red rocket into the sky. From the top Kazima, and I contemplated our work. That's it, comrade. Sturban has fallen. Not Sturban. What do you mean? As I said a week ago Dimitri was beside the mark. We weren't going to attack just one camp, but all of Elysian's bases in the north. The Tet Offensive remastered. With the technology recovered, the scientists mapped the various deposits, weapons, and equipment. Ha 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 ha. Comrade Sebastian, you want to create your own country. Kaz laughed. And we are only at the beginning. Hey Seb you have to see that. Dim told me a little terrify. Seeing him arrive in panic made me fear the worst, but when he dropped me off at the factory I understood why. In his place too I would surely have panicked, but instead I had a demonic smile. My hand began to caress the body of the thing and I'm sure that I was taken for crazy. What is that thing? Dim Tri asked. That my friend it's a tiger. The Elysians were definitely very dangerous, a panzer for at that time and you win almost every war. They are too far ahead of the world and I was starting to understand why. But it was my luck. The fuel is done. A man yelled. Do you know how it works? Dimitri asked. More or less. Kazima, it's you who drives. You take me for your driver that's it. I don't know how to pilot this. Tank. It's a tank, a modern version of what our ancestors used on horseback. The Egyptians did use two-wheel chariots. The crews were a man who maneuvered the horses and an archer who served as a marksman. Its effectiveness on the battlefield was no longer to prove. And even more than the Egyptians the way of ancient China also used tanks but with further improvements as well as a large number of people on board. Today the tiger will serve us to engrave terror in the eyes of our enemies. Let's go visit Steinberg. Pov Lecter. All the radio frequencies of our northern camps shouted the same, alert we are under attack, help us. The fact that we who are supposed to provide them with reinforcements are also under attack. It was a kind of all azimuth operation. They had been preparing this for months, if not years. It was exploding everywhere I could not believe my eyes, the guys were stationed in the trenches and retaliated with rifles but the rebels charged with anger. What the hell are you doing Lecter? The machine gun. Yelled my sergeant. I jumped into the trench and stared at the old machine gun, cranked the crank and a barrage of bullets began to shoot them. But I remember well my training in the 51st. Avoid shooting constantly in a burst. A weapon overheats and a machine gun is worse. Said the sergeant. Firing short bursts at regular intervals will disperse the enemy. And so far it worked except that. What the hell are you waiting for give the source? 
yelled my sergeant. If I do that the machine gun will overheat. Obviously annoyed by my answer he shoved me and grabbed it before pulling in his turn. It shows that he was content to shoot in the heap. Screaming won't make you more precise. So I grabbed my rifle and opened fire several times. They didn't stop it was a crazy thing. As I reloaded my weapon I saw a kind of shell in the sky. At first I couldn't believe it until it fell on us. Mortar, we are attacked with mortar. W where did they get this? I pulled out my binoculars and scanned the horizon, these assholes were shooting from the other side of the hill. This curly-haired guy was giving them instructions. Obviously he was the boss. Fuck, you have to abandon the trench. I screamed. No we keep our positions. Picked up my sergeant. The shots became more and more precise. I got out of the trench and ran to the next bunker. Clear, clear. I told them. The shell landed right where the ammunition was stored. Do you know what it feels like to be blown away by an explosion? Well me neither, but when I got up it had turned to the general melee. The rebels were fighting hand to hand with our men. Some armed with machetes tore the arms of soldiers, others fought with axes. We were pitted with our bayonets attached to the rifle. Out of the vapes I saw one of them charged me with his rifle, I stuck a bullet in his head with my gun, I lowered my head to avoid the machete blow from the back. The guy walked past me and when he turned to me I gave him a good shovel. As I came to my senses I saw the guy with the binoculars entering the complex where the scientists were. Go over here. And don't forget you only shoot if he resists. What is this attack? They are not ordinary rebels. Their assault was precise and coordinated like an army. I'm on a fucking battlefield. I reloaded my already empty gun and ran towards the building. On entering I could see that most of the guards were dead. I followed the traces of blood to the back of the building. They had parked their hostage in the center. One of the docks was lying on the floor with a gun in his hand. The guy with the binoculars had already captured the majority of scientists as well as. What is such a young lady doing around here? Lady Road not her. I have to get her out of there. I had to think. To see these guys are not amateurs, seeing how they hold their guns, they are more than soldiers. It is. A commando. Alpha had said. A group created for army special operations. And that's exactly what we're missing here at Elysian. But they in the north have one. If these guys are commandos, I can't imagine how dangerous they are. I suddenly left my hideout with my hands in the air. These guys immediately pointed at me with their guns. Only I had two grenades in hand. No one moves or everyone stays there. I said. The I recognized the guy through the binoculars. Lars? Lecter. You're not dead? You are alive. Lecter calm down. I see, you use me. It was all a staging. I can see it more clearly now. Yes, it's true. He confessed. But there you are about to do some big bullshit. Really I doubt it. We should shoot him right away. No Maggie nobody shoots without my direct order. Yes that's it, be a good girl or we all stay there. What do you want? Stay away from the scientists. You know I can't do that. He said without a hint of panic. Do it or I'll blow everyone up. Lars I'm going to kill him. I said no one shoots without my order. He said raising his voice. Okay, I want to free a hostage. But only one. Which one you choose? The scientists all turned to me begging me to choose them but at this point my choice was already made. The girl. You release the girl, she doesn't give a shit here. Oh, and why would I do that? You know her? She is important? She's the fiancé of a friend of mine. And you plan to cuckold him? He said smirk. He, but no. I screamed. Lars seemed amused by the situation. 
My hands had become moist from the sweat and casually the pomegranates were starting to weigh down on me. He walked over to Lady Rhodey and put his pistol to her head. I think she is much more important than you want me to believe. No it is not until. While she's dying. No. How you see when you can. Come on tell me who is she. The hangar door exploded causing the room to shake. There I saw my half-scorched faced drill sergeant holding the machine gun to himself. He then turned to us and took aim. Everyone down. Bastards of rebels. As he swept, two guys from the commandos were hit but the rest took cover without too much difficulty. Some scientists were killed elsewhere while others remained lying face down on the ground. Lady Road was also on the ground. I emerged from my hiding place as the sergeant pulled at the crates where Lars and his group hid. Lady Road. Are you alive? In fine fettle. She says. She grabbed the rifle from one of the rebels and started running for the door with me. We managed to get out somehow leaving the sergeant alone with the others. I was running with all my strength not wanting to let go of his hand. Come on, a little more, we're almost there. I said. The gate to the headquarters was a reinforced concrete wall. If we took refuge inside we could finally take shelter. At least what I thought. A loud flash of lightning struck my ears and a huge machine that I had never seen out of nowhere. Be why the gods, how did they manage to get their hands on it? Lady Road asked visibly shocked. A huge vehicle with a metal turret where a cannon was attached. You would think you were dreaming. As I turned the outer wall exploded and a second of its metal monsters appeared. The roof opened and I could see Seb coming out. If he's there, then. Steinberg. He yelled. I'm waiting for you Bowie. The director was in the other tank. The two rose into position pointing their cannons at each other. Rode and I being in the middle. I did not know what to do. So I took her in my arms and hugged her hard to protect her. Mayars grant us courage. Fee-i-i-a. End of chapter.